Welcome back to Adventures with Lilu. In today's video, we discover Cheedale and the Magpie Mines. I was prepared for the crowds and the sunshine, but certainly not for the amount of mud. Come with me as we explore this beautiful part of the Derbyshire Dales. So I'm doing a little bit of probably trespass, but it's more adventure, isn't it, when you don't follow the path. So, whoop. <laughs> so rather than risk climbing over the barbed wire again, I'm going to just shuffle along this, this fence, she says. Famous last words. You watch me fall in now, I've said that. Um, because my feet have got rather wet playing in the waterfall. <laughs> so, oh, and again, um, my trainers, they are completely waterproof, but um, <laughs> not, see there is a, there is a gate, there is a gate actually, it's just so muddy everywhere, so we're not trespassing really, we're just on the wrong side of the barbed wire, that's all. Uh, yeah, my feet feel a little damp because um, these are just normal, like, trainer hiking shoes and uh, my feet went a little bit too deep in the water. Goodness me, it's so muddy. But, there's the, uh, there's the gate that I should have come through and ahead of me, gosh, it's so muddy. <laughs> this could be the moment that I fall. I'm not gonna lie. There's many a a, skew, a skiddy footprint um, of others that haven't fared so well. So, oops, let's just tilt that a little bit. Um, <laughs> I promise I didn't swear. <laughs> but, oh my god. <laughs> Uh. Uh. Right, <laughs> to the next tree. <laughs> I didn't mean to sling you in the hedge there, but... <laughs> right. It's weird because there's obviously a path, but there's not much of one. I assume we're going over there. I don't know. It's all good fun, isn't it? <laughs> it's taken me two hours to get this far, which isn't very far at all, but the main thing is I'm having a good time. <laughs> and it's lovely to be back in the wildlife. As I said, I've got stressful times up ahead with my exam and stuff, bits going on. Um, so it's good to just come out and distract yourself from all that really. Oh, okay. At least it's sunny today. About time. We're almost into April now. So 
it's safe to say you do get a little bit muddy. But looks like we're back on the path. Question is, do we carry on that way or do we go back that way? So I decided to abort the mission of finding the Cheedale Steps. There's that many people and it's that muddy um, that it's, uh, as you can see, this is the next bit I'm having to go through. So I've kind of double backed on myself, double backed, yeah, on myself. And I'm now heading back towards the car along the river. But this mud, honestly, <laughs> I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna get through this. I'm not sure if I can go up and round somehow. I don't know, this is gonna be interesting. I climbed over the barbed wire fence uh, to come on here because it's much easier. And there we go. Popped back over, back on the path of these people. <laughs> So we've left the river and we're going to go up and round to where the viaduct was and this this trail should bring us out at that viaduct where I can cross back over. <sighs> it's a lovely warm day but there's so many people about. I mean it's quite fun actually because everyone's having a good old laugh about the mud situation so it's been quite it's been quite nice to, to meet all the people. I helped a few people directed them over the barbed wire. There is actually a gate at the end. Um, so a few of them got saved from the quagmire. But uh, oh, as you can see, there is a path that goes up that way if you want to take a longer route. However, I'm gonna head back to the car because A, I'm running out of time. B, there's some other places I want to go and visit as well, so. So we didn't find the Cheedale steps, but we have had a lot of fun and we have done a bit of exploring. We found the lime kiln, which actually isn't that difficult to find because it's on the Monsal Trail anyway. We went over and under the viaduct and we found this glorious limestone quarry with a couple of extra hidden buildings that didn't really have much to show, sadly. But So basically what I would recommend is if you come to Cheedale expecting to find the stepping stones, it's not that easy after a lot of rainfall. There's a lot of mud and there's quite a few slippy rocks that I recommend you wear decent footwear, prepare to get muddy hands and feet and have a good time. <laughs> it was really good fun, but I'm gonna come back later in the year when it's a lot drier, see if I can find those famous steps. So for now, I'm going to head back to the car, get some lunch, and then go on to the next adventure. Right, so I'm now parked 
right near the Magpie Mines. Uh, I'm not far away from Cheedale. Cheedale for me was a little bit of a disaster. Um, not quite the video that I was hoping for. So, so muddy. Um, I've changed into my trainers now and I got out of there because it was absolute chaos. I think somebody had slipped in the mud and hurt their leg pretty bad. So the ambulance arrived and all the rescuers arrived and uh, it was pretty chaos in the car park, but hopefully they're okay. Um, but yeah, it was pretty treacherous. It was quite funny watching people uh, struggling in the mud, but um, it was hard going. I walked about four mile and I'd had enough um, after a couple of miles walking towards the steps that I, I couldn't see. So I thought I would come here and I've just had something to eat. Um, but we're going to go and have a little explore on this, um, this, this site that used to be one of the Peak District's many, many lead mines. So let's go and take a look. Ooh. It's got quite chilly now. Um, the sun's still out, but um, that wind is quite cool and uh, I've had to put all my layers back on. Oh, it's a bit drafty. With a history spanning over three centuries, Magpie Mine stands today showcasing the development of mining techniques over the course of the Industrial Revolution. Outside the site's industrial history, Magpie Mine also boasts a rich cultural history involving the people who worked here, with colourful tales of murder, disputes, rivalries and closures. The earliest remains of mining history found on this site of Magpie Mine date back to at least 1740, although records of the Shuttleback vein have been found which date back to 1682. In the wake of the Magpie's success, several additional mines were constructed in the area, sparking fierce conflict over territorial issues. The main dispute occurred between the miners of Magpie Mine and the miners of the nearby Maypit Mine, the cause of the tension being the shared Great Red Soil Vein, which connect both mines. The quarrelling escalated over time and the miners from both camps turned militant, lighting fires into the vein in order to smoke the other side out. The conflict became deadly in 1833 when three Maypit miners were suffocated. 24 miners were put on trial but were acquitted due to insufficient evidence. Despite a series of renovations production stalled regularly at the end of the 19th and into the 20th century, and after several false starts, Magpie Mine closed for good in 1954. Imagine going down there. I am actually so glad to be back in the car. It is, it's gone freezing outside. Really interesting going to see that mine. Um, yeah, it wasn't what I expected, but there was quite a lot of information there as well. So, I mean, I love stuff like that. I love knowing the, the history and knowing all about the mines and the, the lime kilns and the engine houses. I find it all fascinating that, you know, that's what people used to do and we can still see it, luckily. So yeah, so now I've got to decide what to do. My car is set up as a camper, roughly, but it is really, really cold and it's supposed to get down to three degrees tonight. And I forgot my electric blanket. Um, also, I don't exactly know where I'm going to stay tonight if I do. I've seen a couple of places on park for night, but they're quite exposed. I, can't, I, I could stay here potentially, but this road is like really busy and really noisy. So it wouldn't be very pleasant. Right, I've decided we're going to go and look for the park up. There's three options on Moor Road, which is only about 11 minutes according to SatNav. So we're going to go and have a drive and see how good this park up is. Whether I stay there tonight, I don't know, but it's worth going to have a look how nice it is. And then when I come another time, I'll have somewhere to stay. So let's go and check it out. Okay, so 
I've got 40 miles to drive home. I can be there just before dark. Uh, but be about an hour and a half drive. I haven't really found anywhere suitable to stay tonight that I feel comfortable staying. And I haven't got enough food with me and I'll starve. So, although the car is sort of set up, I only did it quickly this morning. Um, so yeah, I'm a little bit about staying. So I'm going to go home, see the cats, because Whisper's really not been very well. And um, have a good night's sleep in my own bed. And take a look at the car camping situation tomorrow. Um, and make sure that I have got everything in the car. I kind of just threw it all in last minute, so... I'm a bit um, anxious about staying in the car, especially when it's cold and I forgot my electric blanket. So today was a bit of a recce. Um, the main thing is I got out and enjoyed the sunshine. It's really bright. It's just right. The sun's going down right in front of me. It's blinding me. So yeah, um, as I say, this area is pretty good for camping, but it's very popular with the hang gliders. So I don't feel comfortable staying here. I'm going to head home and we'll have another adventure very soon but thank you for watching sorry it's not been the best video today um it's just been so busy with people everywhere and with the mud and everything else it wasn't really very easy to film things um but hopefully i can cobble together some sort of video for you so you can see what i got up to today it's also interesting places the sun is blinding me i shouldn't have parked facing this way oh my goodness don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like and share and comment if you've been to these places before. What do you think about them? Can you recommend other places in the Peak District that I haven't already shown on my YouTubes? And I shall see you on the next adventure. Bye! Snow. Ah. <laughs> no. Oh, I need to...